Hello and welcome to Alva Rail Communications videos. Over the past few years, there has been a lot of hype around the prospect of using 5G for train to ground communications. You probably know that passengers want broadband internet as they are used to it in their homes, offices, or streets. The problem is that internet on the train is usually very slow, especially outside the urban areas where there is no 5G or even 4G coverage. At the same time, rail operators, not relying on cellular communications, are launching dedicated wireless network projects at 5 to 94 gigahertz along railroad tracks to meet the needs of onboard online services. Which technology is more promising for internet access on trains, 5G or trackside network? Let's discuss why rail companies are spending money on a dedicated need to it despite further development of 5G zones. What is the capacity of 5G on trains today? Let's take a look at a test done by a blogger on a train in the suburbs of Helsinki in Finland. The download speed is excellent, although the upload speed is 15 times lower and like for 4G. Can we say that where there is 5G coverage, the problem of broadband internet access on trains has finally been solved, and it's just a matter of mass installation of new base stations and smartphones with 5G support? Yes and no. We'll talk about that next. Right now, I will say that such a high result is that the test smartphone was probably because this gadget was just one of the few with 5G support on the train. The data speed will be always very good if there are just few subscribers on the cell. Let's move our review to America to Amtrak trains. To illustrate 5G on Amtrak trains, I will use a table from PCMag website. For an article in PCMag, they carried out a study of data transmission speeds on the so-called Eastern Corridor Railroad route. It showed that T-Mobile had the best results compared to other carriers on this route. But compared to Finland, the data transfer speeds are a few times slower, and the uploads are even at the level of the poor 4G. This may be also due to the large number of passengers on the American trains compared to the Finnish train. And the more subscribers are in the cell, the less traffic is shared to each of them. Another reason could be the different classes of 5G equipment, different bandwidths of 5G base stations and throughput of the communication channels to which these base stations are connected. Overall, 5G coverage on Amtrak routes is very uneven, and the example of train number 449 shows that about half of the route simply lacks broadband internet access. Next, I would like to explain how the 5G signal from base stations along the track turns into onboard Wi-Fi for passengers. This is done using a special router and 5G modems that are placed on the roof of the train. This is what a typical router for railway technology with a wireless 5G gateway looks like. Each 5G modem usually uses four SIM cards from different mobile carriers. This helps improve train-to-ground communications in case any carrier has poor cellular coverage on a given part of the track. The train uses several modems that are connected to a router, and the router sends the internet to the onboard Wi-Fi for the passengers. The router can aggregate data from multiple modems, usually no more than three or four. Communication technology using a modem with multiple SIM cards from different operators allows for much better availability than by each operator separately. However, the data speed per onboard Wi-Fi network subscriber will not be really high because the channel obtained in this way is divided among all passengers who are connected to Wi-Fi in the train. Now let's break down the pros and cons of 5G for rail operators. After all, it is not for nothing that they build their own networks, not hoping for 5G. There must be reasons for this. The big pros of 5G are that it's to be almost free for rail operators. To focus on 5G, the rail company doesn't have to do anything at all. Just wait for the mobile operators to install 5G base stations along the railroad tracks. Then they can do an inexpensive upgrade of the train modems from LTE to 5G and feed that traffic to the onboard Wi-Fi network. The first weak point of this 5G train ground strategy is, you'll have to wait a long time for 5G coverage everywhere. Especially it's true for long-distance rail routes and through non-populated areas. Mobile operators can count their money just as well as rail operators. Therefore, practice shows why 5G equipment along the railroad only appears on very popular and relatively short routes. For example, such as Boston to New York. 
The second cons are that 5G inherits a common drawback of cellular communications in the form of a drop in bandwidth when a large number of subscribers are registered in a cell. The train carrying a few hundred passengers is an example of an event of such pump overcrowding of a cell. As long as 5G-enabled smartphones are relatively uncommon, their owners can enjoy high-speed internet connections on trains. But when all passengers will have such gadgets, the capacity of the base station channel will be expanded to all devices and the connection speed is expected to drop. The third disadvantage is the growing latency in registering a SIM card in the cell of the next base station as the train speed up. Accordingly, the internet connection of any onboard subscriber will drop. At train speeds of 100 km per hour, the drop in connection quality will be about 30% compared to when the train is standing still. It can be expected that for high-speed trains moving at 250 to 400 km per hour, the quality of 5G communication will be worse. The fourth 5G train ground connectivity drawback is the asymmetrical nature of 5G communication when the download speed of all operators is about 20 times higher than the upload speed. This disadvantage is especially difficult to eliminate in trains because of the physics of the process. And here's why. The base station has a powerful transmitter, so the signal can be modulated to a broadband 5G connection. The user smartphone's transmitter, on the other hand, is low-powered and in addition, operates from inside the metal body of the rail car. So, a simpler modulation scheme is forced, usually 4G to 3G to allow the base station to receive a weak signal from the subscriber. The outage for remote video surveillance is unacceptable in today's world, which is full of potential hazards, and 5G's upload capabilities are quite weak to transmit video from onboard HD cameras. It is not surprising that rail operators are considering dedicated wireless network designs that do not depend on cellular coverage along the tracks and have symmetrical download and upload. Now, I'll tell you how the alternative to 5G works. This is the construction of a dedicated wireless network with broadband access to the carrier's data center and then to the Internet. The British regulatory body Ofcom recommends having a train-to-ground link of at least 1 gigabit preferably 2 to 3 gigabits. With a millimeter wave network, not only can these recommended values be achieved, but they can easily be surpassed. Now about what dedicated carrier networks are. In terms of their architecture, they are almost identical for different equipment vendors, differing mainly in the frequency range and equipment characteristics in terms of radio design and communication capacity. In general, they are similar to the 5G architecture with the exception that there is only one operator and the channel only works with the train equipment. Passengers' gadgets cannot pick up the signal because it has a special frequency and modulation. The transceivers are installed forward and backward in the train and thus avoid degradation of communication quality and obtain almost zero latency. Toward the end of our video, I will show you how the dedicated network works using Elver radio terminals. The radios operate in the millimeter wave range at 76 gigahertz. The bandwidth per train on our equipment is up to 10 gigabits per second, with symmetrical download and unload traffic. In the left photo you see the base station, and on the right what the train rooftop radio looks like. Next I want to show a short video on how the trackside network is installed using the Elva wireless equipment. The 76 GHz base stations are installed at a distance of 2 km from each other on straight sections of track and are connected to the rail operator's optical backbone. For curved sections, the distance between base stations is determined by the direct line of sight between the base station and the train rooftop radio. The base stations are then adjusted so that they face the middle of the track at the correct height to make sure that everything works well. A test is carried out with a dress iron that drives along the base stations and adjusts the alignment if necessary. This dress sign simulates a train with the rooftop radios installed. Then the train with installed radios moves along base stations on high speed and the wireless connection is checked. Our equipment allows us to transmission of outdoor traffic of more than 10 gigabits per second. That's enough for 200 remote surveillance cameras to work onboard and for passengers to enjoy the broadband internet. If you want to learn more about Elva wireless equipment for 10 gigabit train to earth communication, I recommend following the link to Elva website in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.